Hello, today we are going to learn the first chapter of Hornbill, one of the textbooks prescribed for 11th grade students studying in CBSC board. The title of the chapter is The Portrait of a Lady, written by Khushwan Singh, a very renowned English writer of our country. Now, before we go into the details of the chapter, a few words about its uh, author, Khushwan Singh. He was not just an Indian author, but besides, he was also a lawyer, a diplomat, a journalist, and a politician, all embedded into one. He was a highly intellectual personality. His experience in the 1947 partition of our country into Hindustan and Pakistan inspired him so much that he came out with a beautiful novel, uh, the title of which is Train to Pakistan, one of my favorite books. In fact, it was after reading this novel in my school days that I came to know about Khushwan Singh as a writer. Not to mention the fact that by many people it is considered to be his greatest work ever written. Well, our present story, The Portrait of a Lady, is a sort of autobiographical story. In this, the narrator describes his grandmother. Well, the portrait here refers to the pen portrait or a character sketch. Or a sort of description and the lady uh, stands for uh, his own grandmother so it is the description or it is the story of his own grandmother so I think some you, you must have got some idea about what this chapter is all about it is about his grandmother for the sake of convenience of study I have divided this chapter in three parts just for the sake of understanding remember three D's number one the description Number two, the development, and number three, the destination. Now, what is the description? The description, by saying the word description, I mean the description of his grandmother. Secondly, the development of the relationship, development of his relationship uh, with his grandmother. There are three stages of the development of his relationship with his grandmother. And number three, the destination. Like anyone else, he loses his grandmother. So with this outline, if you try to understand this chapter, I think it will appear to be quite easy for us to understand. Now let's begin with this viewpoint. Now, in the first part, he describes the, he talks about the description, as I said, the description part. Now in the description, he says that his grandmother was very old, so old that she could not even look a day older. Her face was highly wrinkled. The wrinkles appeared to be going from everywhere to everywhere, crisscross. That is the word used by the narrator in this chapter. She uh, was so old that it was very hard to believe that once upon a time she could be young and pretty also. Whenever anyone used to tell uh, the idea that uh, she was young, it was very hard to believe. So she was very old, so old that she could not uh, be a day older. Then the narrator also talks about his uh, grandfather's picture that was hanging above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban, his clothes were very loose and he looked at least a hundred years old. And it was very hard to believe that once upon a time he had wife and children. It usually happens. It is difficult for grandchildren to believe that once upon a time their grandparents were young, agile and active and they used to play the games that young people play. So the same thing happened even in the case of Kushwan Singh, the narrator. So he describes his grandmother. He goes on to talk about her that she was not, uh, she could not walk straight. She was a short lady and she was bent and while walking, while walking, she used one of her hands to support her, keeping uh, the hand on her waist and the other she used to tell the beads. In the other hand, she had a rosary and she uh, told the prayers on counting the beads. Telling the beads means counting the beads in a prayerful way. So this is how he talks about uh, his grandmother's outer appearance, how she looked and uh, how she appeared to be. So this is the description. The first few paragraphs or uh, the first few lines have been taken by the narrator to talk about the grandmother's outer appearance. Then in the second, we study or we read the development of the relationship. So as I have told you already that we come across the three stages of the development of the relationship. In the first stage, we will not read the whole lines, you can go through the text yourself, but just uh, to mention one line on page number four, if you have the NCRT book, the second paragraph starts like this. 
my grandmother and I were good friends. My parents left me with her when they went uh, to live in the city and we were constantly together. So this is the first stage when the grandmother and the narrator were staying together. What happened when they were staying together? We will not read it, but I will tell you, I will narrate it in quite in detail what happens. At this stage, the grandmother took good care of him. And what did she do? Every day it was a usual practice for the grandmother to wake him up. To wake whom? To wake the grandson, that means the narrator. He was, uh, you know, he was waken every day by uh, his grandmother. Then she got him ready for school. She said her morning prayers and she even expected that the kid should say the prayers. But what, what does he say? He liked her voice but never bothered to learn it. The prayers were not quite learned by, you know, the grandson. Then what was the habit? Then she would fetch his wooden slate, uh, you know, the earthen ink pot and the reed pen. She used to tie all this into a bundle, the stationery. Uh, uh, she used to tie in a bundle and hand it over to whom? To the narrator. She would give him a thick steel chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it. And then she used to take him to school. It was for after taking breakfast. She used to take him to school. She even carried several steel chapatis with her for the village dogs. Then, in the school, what was the usual habit? The school was attached to the temple. The priest taught children the alphabet and the morning prayer. The children sat in two rows and they used to study. They, they, they were taught alphabet and morning prayer in, uh, uh, in the school. Then. During this time, the grandmother would sit inside the temple and she would read the holy books. And then after when the school got over, then both of them, the grandmother and the grandson, they would come back to the home. This was the regular habit. This was the, this was the usual practice that took place every day. This was the first stage of their uh, relationship. Then, then what happened? There came a turning point in their relationship. The same page number four, if you were to read the last but one paragraph, it's written in the second line. That was a turning point in our friendship. What was the turning point? When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. Now the narrator, he goes to the city along with his grandmother. Then what happened there? They shared the same room, that was right. But the grandmother no longer went to school with him, like in the village. The narrator used to go to an English school uh, in a motor bus. Then no dogs in the street, no feeding of dogs. So a slight change, a turning point came in their relationship. Then in the school, subjects that were taught were not quite liked by the grandmother. We read that uh, she did not believe in the things that were taught in the English school. She was not happy. She was moreover not happy that there was no teaching about God and scriptures. She believed that schools should impart education uh, about God and uh, moral values. God and scriptures means in a sense we can say that moral values. Once the narrator announced that he had some music class, the grandmother became quite sad. She was not happy on uh, listening or on knowing that the uh, uh, that her grandson had music lessons. Why? Because according to her, music was not meant for quite decent people. It was indecent. It was meant only for people like prostitutes. It was not meant for gentle folk. So this is the second stage of their relationship. Then we come to the third stage. In the third stage, the narrator went to the university. He was given a room of his own. The common link of, uh, you know, their friendship was broken. Then how did she spend her time? Who? How did the grandmother during this period spend her time? She was always busy with spinning wheels and reciting prayers. We have seen from the beginning itself, she was a very godly lady. She always used to recite her prayers. She would only feed the sparrows. And let me tell you, she was so friendly with the sparrows that when she broke the, uh, the pieces of bread into little crumbs, the sparrows would come and, you know, they would uh, sit on her legs, on her shoulders, then some even on her own head. You can imagine how friendly she was and how the sparrows even liked her, that they came and sat on her legs, her shoulders, and even on her head. So this was the usual practice that took place. Then, 
after this, after these three stages of the relationship, there came a time in the life of the narrator when he had to move abroad for his higher studies. He was to remain away for five years. So you can imagine what could be going on through his minds. He knew that his grandmother was quite old and no one could predict at her age. We read that she could, you know, die at any moment. The narrator was quite worried. But the grandmother was not worried at all. She came to see him off and she showed no emotion. Her lips only moved in prayer. And what she, did she do? She kissed his forehead silently. Then what did the narrator think? We read that the narrator thinks that uh, it may be uh, the li last sign of the physical contact between us, between the grandmother and the grandson. But it did not so happen. After five years, when the narrator comes back, he finds that uh, the grandmother was still there to receive him. Moreover, she did not look a day older. She did not speak anything. She simply took him in her arms. But then things started taking a different turn. In the evening, a change came over her. She didn't pray. A lady that that was known for praying every day, she did not pray. She simply collected the women of the neighborhood and uh, she got an old drum and she started singing. She had to be persuaded to stop. And what did she sing? She sang the homecoming of warriors. If you read the text, you will come across this. It was the first time that she had forgotten to pray. The next morning, she fell ill. You will understand if you read the text that it appeared as though the grandmother was alive only because she wanted to see her grandson for a last time. The next morning itself, she fell ill and she announced that her end was near. We read on page number six in the second paragraph, she told us that her end was near. Somehow she had this realization that she was not going to survive anymore and that the end was very near. She stopped praying, uh, but when she was persuaded, uh, she, she started praying, she was praying and telling the beads. Gradually what happened? Her lips stopped moving. The rosary fell from her hands and she was gone. She was no more. She was laid on the ground as was the customary and she was covered with a red shawl. And arrangements were being made for her funeral. The sun was setting, you know, and the, uh, they, they brought a wooden stretcher. That's what we read in the further paragraphs. Thousands of sparrows sat near her dead body, but they did not chirp as usual. They did not chirp as usual. They were simply sitting and it appeared as though they were mourning for the lady uh, uh, who had been taking care of them for a long time. When the narrator's mother saw whom, saw whom, saw these, uh, you know, these words, she brought a piece of bread and she broke it into little crumbs and she threw them to the sparrows. But strange to see that even the sparrows took no notice of these, you know, crumbs of bread. Perhaps they knew that something was wrong. They knew that the lady, the old lady who had been taking care of them for a long time uh, was no more. They were mourning. They were sad. The sparrows flew away quietly. They did not even touch the crumbs of bread. And next morning, these pieces of bread, these crumbs of bread, bread had to be swept away while it was being cleaned. And here comes the end of the story. So as I said in the beginning itself, it is an autobiographical story in which the narrator talks about his grandmother. It's a pen portrait of his grandmother and especially the stages of his development, of his relationship uh, uh, with his grandmother. If any further discussion is needed on this chapter, let me know in the comment section. Please, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out my previous videos. I will be coming out again with uh, different videos uh, on different chapters of classes 10, 11 and 12. Thank you so much.